Welcome to the Our World Media Network for this Saturday, October 2nd, 2021. I'm Wayne Gilman, and this is the urban algorithm that you're tuned to, and we welcome you here. And uh, this particular Saturday, we're just going to deviate a little bit from uh, what we normally discuss, politics, and there's a lot to discuss with that. The Biden uh, budget, the infrastructure bill, uh, we could go on and on. But we're going to segue into culture today. And I've been just recently moved by an exhibit uh, by a mixed media artist, a famous one to be exact. His name is Larry Winston Collins. I know many of you who are into the art world must be familiar with him. You know, I, I'm just now becoming involved because I feel like I, I uh, certainly did not get that education, <laughs> you know, when it comes to, to really having a great appreciation for the arts. Larry, I just want to welcome you to the show. There he is, all the way from right. Cincinnati, Ohio. Thank you. And as all I right, said at the, uh, at the honor, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you on. And um, for... The most part, uh, I guess we'll describe verbally some of your work until we could actually uh, figure out a way to get it up on screen so everybody could uh, witness what it is that I've witnessed and certainly what you've labored over. My first question to you, how do you define a mixed media artist? Okay, well, first of all, uh, thank you for having me on the program. It's a pleasure to meet you, uh, Wayne. Mm -hmm. uh, It's uh, great to be on this program. Uh, A mixed media artist is an artist that actually works in a lot of different materials. You know, uh, we work sort of in between, you know, painting, drawing, sculpture. Uh, We work with a lot of uh, found materials a lot of times. You know, I, I, I work with a lot of found materials. I go scavenging around, you know, go to thrift stores and pick up things and use like uh, use metals like old cans or uh, use uh, old frames that I sort of re- reconstruct and and then I'll just find things cloth or, you know, whatever material. So when you say mixed media, it sort of covers a lot of different things. I sort of work in between a lot of different sort of mediums like like I mentioned, like painting, drawing. I was a printmaker at one point too. Mm. I'm still doing some printmaking. So a lot of my printmaking skills sort of come out in some of my paintings. And then uh, I enjoy doing sculptures. So I work with different materials uh, with sculptures like wood and and metal and wire and cloth and things like that. And so I I enjoy just kind of working with a lot of different types of art. different materials and things yeah well i tell you you do amazing work i mean i've read your resume and it's like reading the lord's prayer i mean you've been all over the place and uh, i'm not saying that to to sound insulting let me just you know make sure i get that in but um my exposure to artwork as i said just before we uh went live uh, i have a cousin who i grew up with uh in brooklyn Back in the day, uh, her name is Talita Gilman Long. She is the mother of famous actress. We're all very proud of Nia Nia Long. And uh, I first witnessed her doing what I think was print. And I'll ask her, and I know if she's watching this, I'm going to catch hell because I intended to have her on. But... uh, you know, I was so taken back by some of your work. I said, let me, when I got the call from my other cousin, Daphne and Dave, who will blame for this? <laughs> but I just uh, I just really felt it was important that we, we started with you first because, you know, you that, that Longstreet exhibit that you have in Columbus, Ohio, is a huge mural, and it takes up what, what looks like a whole city block. Am I right? Yes, yes. Yeah. It actually... Uh... It actually goes across uh, a bridge that goes across uh, I-71 that's in Columbus, Ohio, but it's uh, it's on Long Street. So Long Street crosses over uh, I-71. So there's like six lanes of uh, traffic, you know, yeah. uh, on, the, on the freeway. So it, it actually expands over that, that freeway. Right. And how long did that take? Because it seems like, uh, you know, (laughs) a lot of work there. 
Yeah, it was actually about two years in the, in the making. You know, uh, I guess they put out a, a call for artists and I guess it was probably like uh, 2013 and uh, they've been doing a lot of, you know, construction on the freeways and things in Columbus and actually still are doing a lot of construction. I was just there and man, it's still, still going on to this day. But back then they were actually doing a lot of reconstruction to the uh, freeways in the inner city of uh, Columbus. Uh -huh. and so they put out a, a call for artists to submit some works to actually um, be put on this bridge as a mural that kind of represented the uh, community and mm. sort of the near east side of Columbus. And so, you know, I kind of grew up on the near east side of Columbus. Uh, I actually came to Columbus. I actually grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm. And then I came, I came to a college at Columbus College of Art and Design in 74. And uh, so I lived right there on the Near East Side. Columbus College of Art and Design is right there uh, near Long Street. And so, and then I, you know, I ended up living in Columbus, you know, got married and raised a family in Columbus. And so I was really, uh, you know, pretty familiar with that area. Uh -huh. And so when I get this call, I was like, wow, wow, I would love to do this. So I submitted some works and and then it got down to me and another artist who was a, a photographer, uh, a guy by the name of Kojo Kamal. And mm. so it got down to us both that were being considered to do the uh, images for the actual mural. And then, uh, you know, I have known Kojo for quite a while. We worked on quite a few projects together. We belonged to an organization called ACE, which was uh, Arts for Community Expression, which was an organization of African-American artists that they're in Columbus. Uh, I'm giving them a shout out right now. But, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> but, so, you know, we were familiar with each other and, you know, it worked on some exhibitions and things. So, you know, they were going back and forth, like, you know, who should do it? And then finally my wife, you know, who I always, you know, love getting advice from, <laughs> said, you know, this, this is silly. Why don't both of you do it, you know? Mm. And so I was like, yeah, you know, that's a great idea. So so I called Kojo up and, and talked to him. And so that's how we kind of submitted our proposal. And they loved the idea of actually having photographs and, uh, and artwork on the actual uh, mural. So that's how we actually uh, got the opportunity actually to, to do it together. Right. And most of the people who are featured on that mural are uh, st residents or at least they were born in Columbus, you know? Right. I, yeah. I, I recognize a couple because at first I thought I saw someone who looked like Frederick Douglass to me. And uh, I don't know, you know who it is? Uh, you know, maybe you don't know. It's someone with uh, like a receding hairline with hair going in the back. Uh, you just seemed uh, like... You know who who would that be? I think that 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 might be um, Rusty Bryant. Okay, uh, he's a, a, a saxophone player. Right, uh, right, right. Yeah, uh, that might be. Uh huh. Like, I'm not quite sure, but right, right. Well, but, uh, you know, I could always uh, go back to it when you get it back up on screen. But I know I didn't know that Philip Michael Thomas, who. Uh, made his fame in uh, Miami Vice, uh, was a resident of um, Columbus, and uh, who uh, um, we just Bernie lost Casey. him, Bertie Casey. Yeah, great right, actor. Right, right. Two great right, actors. Right, right. You know. Oh, yeah. And, um, Hal Williams, who was also right. an actor, was in the TV sitcom uh, 227. 227, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, uh, Nancy, Nancy Wilson. Oh. Uh, another. Right, right. You know, yeah, she's on Nancy there. Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Buster Douglas, who wow. was a world heavyweight champion for for a year. About mm -hmm. you know, he, I think he defeated Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I remember he's right. well. I don't want to say anything that would sound disparaging, but <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I I, I don't have. Uh, I mean, boxing is boxing, and that's it. Just leave. That's that's a whole show by. You know, we'll have to schedule, but uh, I just want to remain on the artistic work that you're doing, and I think that's that's so important. And um, you know, and and 
again, when they put murals like that together, it looks like there's a concrete backdrop. Am I right? Or with the wall that yeah, it's on? The, yeah, the actual mural was sort of a state-of-the-art type of uh, production because they actually created these uh, backlit panels. So yeah. the, the actual images are on these uh, glass panels. And so there's a, a, a light that's in the back of them. So you can actually see it at night. It's actually illuminated at night. Right. And, uh, and so, and, the, and I guess it, it was divided into nine different sections. You know, we did our church, theater, art, dance, uh, Arthur's business, education, um, yeah, sports. You know, mm -hmm. So there, there. So there. I think there were about nine panels for each each section, right? So, and uh, and a gather probably could have been even larger. I would imagine. I mean, I don't know uh, the history of Columbus, but you know, I've certainly uh, have heard a great deal about you know people from from that part of the state, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it it's just I saw a nighttime image of it. And I just thought it was breathtaking. So I can only imagine what it'd be like to physically be there and witness that. But uh, what I'd also like to discuss, and I guess at some point we'll be able to bring it up before we go for a break, uh, some of the political work that you've done. You know, uh, and when I say political, I, you know, I'm thinking of the exhibition that you have, uh, They That Matter, you know, uh, portraits of uh, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Trayvon Martin, you know, and uh, and actually you have actually done work on people who predate those killings, and it's uh, it must be very painful. I mean, I don't know how many times I've watched the George, George Floyd, you know, uh, execution. The, they say eight minutes and change. To me, it was more like nine or ten. And, um, you know... It, it, it must be awfully hard to to conjure up when you're putting together something like that. I mean, what is it that you go through? I guess that's what I should ask. You know. Uh, well, with that exhibition in particular, uh, it was a uh, quite a, uh, I guess, sort of a mental type of. Uh, drain I, mm -hmm. I, I guess that's the best way to kind of put it because you know you kind of uh you have to do some research in order to actually do the actual images you know uh, mm -hmm. i guess i i originally did the image of trayvon martin back when uh that whole kind of incident sort of happened back in uh i think it was 2012. yeah but i, re I remember seeing that in the news and uh, just watching you know coverage of it on television and things and I really felt like I needed to just uh, do something that was, you know, an expression of uh, how I was feeling about the whole situation of uh, uh, Trayvon Martin being being uh, killed. Right. And so, and so I started working on that, and then uh, I started thinking about, you know, how the best way to actually express doing a portrait of him. And that's where I started thinking about some past projects that I have done. I did this series called uh, uh, All for the Calls. And All for the Calls was a series that I did of, uh, I think it was about 33 portraits, kind of smaller on a little bit smaller scale. But they were portraits of people who died during like the civil rights movement. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, Everett, uh, Megar Evers, Martin Luther King. Uh, right. Emmett Till. Emmett Till. Yeah. yeah. And I was moved uh, so by I, that. Yeah, so I, I did, I had done that exhibition. So I started thinking about, you know, how I actually created those images using a lot of found materials. You know, we were talking about mixed media. So I, I thought about how I can actually create some larger, more expressive frames and portraits, you know, to, to think about the uh, Trayvon Martin. And then, uh, I, I talked about, like, you know, I like to go to thrift stores and things like that. So mm -hmm. I, I went to a thrift store and I found this magazine uh, that had Fade That Matter on the cover. And I actually have it right here. So this was the actual magazine right okay. here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I see it. You know. And so 
I bought that, you know, for a quarter or 50 cents or whatever <laughs> and brought it home and started, you know, started reading. And, and on the inside, they had a lot of different cases that was being uh, uh, published, or mm -hmm. being considered, you know, of uh, black men and women who had been killed by extreme police violence. And so I started reading over those and then I was really touched by those stories. And so that made me start thinking, wow, I should really start thinking about doing this as a series and just start doing, adding some more pictures onto not just the Trayvon Martin, but actually adding, you know, Eric Garner and Anton Sterling and, you know, Tony Robertson and, and, and a number of other, other people, you know, just right. to the actual. And so that's what kind of made me actually start working on this actual series. Gotcha. We're at uh, 15 minutes past the hour. We're going to have to take a little break here. I'm going to have some more questions for you, particularly on Trayvon Martin and some of the, the descriptions. We just had the, uh, the photograph up on the screen a moment ago. But we'll be right back with more of the Urban Algorithm for this October 2nd, 2021. Wayne Gillen with you and our special guest, fame mixed media artist, Larry Winston Collins. We'll be right back after these words. All right, how you guys doing? Wait, wait, how'd you get your video like that? Is that 4K or something? Right, you got us over here looking like a hot mess. <laughs> no, it's actually a powerful live streaming app for Mac called Ecamm Live. You know what? Let me show it to you real quick. So you're able to use your mirrorless camera as a virtual webcam, and you can tweak the colors right in Ecamm Live using their camera effects, and then bring this video right into Zoom, Google Meet, and pretty much any other virtual meeting app. You can even stream directly to Facebook, YouTube, or LinkedIn and bring in comments right onto the video. And you can customize the look, size, and position of the comments right in the app. Oh, you can even add your logo to the corner of your video, or yourself, or both. There are plenty of picture and picture styles to choose from if you're sharing your screen for a tutorial or doing a presentation. And it doesn't have to be live. You can use it to record a course and eliminate the need to have to edit it later. All in 4K quality. And if you got a green screen, you can set it up right in Ecamm Live and you can bring that into your different meetings. If you're feeling fancy, you can move yourself into the corner of your frame to do a commentary or a reaction video. You can even add in video clips just by dragging and dropping it in. Pretty much everything's drag and drop. Y'all follow me? Okay, good. So if you want to step it up a notch, you can add some overlays to your video, whether it's a simple graphic or you want to have some titles or other info at the bottom of your screen. You can even add animated overlays like this one or this one. And with Ecamm Live's interview mode, you have full control over the look and feel of your broadcast. And you can add branded overlays to frame you and your guests and look like a real legit broadcast. And you can save each layout as a scene and switch between them with the press of a button. You know, these days between virtual meetings, school, live streams, we on video all the time. So you just want to show up in a way where you can be confident and proud of. And for me, Ecamm Live is at the center of it all. Did y'all get all that? You were on mute. You get off the plane and you're like, wow, I'm alive. You have to breathe because it's breathtaking. It's the center of the world. Brooklyn, Manhattan, Staten Island, Queens. They have the Rockaways, the beach, or the Flushing Meadow Park. Small places that you never think exist. From there, we'll go up to the Bronx. Nature. Brooklyn. You got Coney Island. You get to happen upon things. Yes. Manhattan never gets out of class. Chelsea, Soho. It's an area bien fancy, ¿me entiendes? Go to the Empire State Building, go to the top of Rockefeller Center. Staten Island. Staten Island, there's something for everybody. New York City is an awesome place to come with family. You got things for kids, you got things for adults. Even like museums have amazing story times. That's the beauty of this organic city. It creates new flavors of what once was coming from another country. All of it, everyone's welcome. The biggest rainbow in the world. El latest New York.
New York State's largest African-American Chamber of Commerce, known as LIAACC, is now accepting new membership candidates. LIAACC has appeared on WABC, Here and Now, NBC's Positively Black, WLIW21, FIOS1, and in Long Island Business News. Membership consists of a variety of men and women of distinction who have been bestowed some of the most prestigious awards in the region. We host monthly membership meetings and signature events, including the Long Island African-American Business Expo, Annual Health Fair, Ladies of LIAACC Annual Women's History Month program and our annual Black History Month art exhibition. Join by simply logging on to our easy new membership sign up portal at www.liaacc.org. Hi, my name is Maya Delgado and I am the brand ambassador of Kids Breakdown. And this is my demo video. Enjoy! Download app on Google Play or App Store. Create account. Choose avatar. Enter Kids Breakground Roadmap. Roadmap consists of math, spelling, memorization, and matching mini games. After each mini game, personality and interest questions will appear to pinpoint which job may suit you best. After completion of all eight mini games, you will be presented with jobs you may want to learn more about. Read fun facts about all the different types of jobs within the law science, and arts career. Use your gold bricks to make your job environment fully complete. Go back and play mini games to earn more bricks if needed. I hope you enjoyed the Kids Breakdown demo video. Make sure to download today and share with your friends. This platform will pave the way for kids who are just like me, the groundbreakers of tomorrow. I can't, I can't hear you. And Collins, can he, there he is. I see him on screen. Can you yeah. hear us? Okay, yes, great, you. great. Yeah, we had a little break there uh, to pay the bills, as they say, in, uh, in uh, broadcast vernacular. But uh, in a few minutes that we have left, I, I was taken back by the Trayvon Martin um, uh, uh, portrait uh, that you did. I um, I noticed that you fit in Skittles, which to me was uh, a very defining uh, point in trying to make because, unfortunately, he lost his life over a bag of Skittles, you know? How did you come to, to put that together? Uh, well, like I mentioned, you know, whenever, you know, you start doing uh, some works of arts uh, in you know, you start thinking about the uh, particular person that you're trying to express. Uh, for Trayvon Martin's case, you know, I, I did a little research on, you know, how uh, he came to be uh, killed in uh, the way that he was and that he had went to the store and he had bought uh, some, a bag of Skittles and I think it was an Arizona uh, tea. Right. Mm -hmm. and so and so, you know, I thought that you know those were some things that I could actually use in the actual construction of the actual portrait. You know, not not in a way that would be distracting or anything, but it would actually kind of enhance the actual uh, design of the actual structure in a sort of a creative way. So, you know, I, th I thought about that, and then some of the other things like uh, the figures on the side, or sort of like. Uh, sort of like target images that you might see at a at a park for a shooting shooting range or something like mm, that yeah i that's, wanted that's to the, find out about that i'm sorry i don't mean to cut you off yeah and so you know i, I really kind of thought about how best to kind of uh, express the whole uh, aesthetics of the the portrait Mm. Uh, I don't know whether or not if you know uh, his parents, uh, who are very uh, active politically. I know from time to time I would see see them on different shows. I know they've been guests of uh, the Reverend Al Sharpton, who's also been just as equally as active. Have they seen your exhibition, or do you know that, or, or you don't uh, know? Not that I know of. You know, mm. one of the things that I would love to do is for... Uh, this exhibition to possibly travel to some different locations 
And I'm going to actually start working on that. I, I just recently retired from working as a uh, professor at uh, Miami University. And so I, I retired about three or four months ago. Mm. And so w one of the things that I w want to try to start concentrating on is just trying to uh, trying to get my artwork out to some other different uh, places so that more people can kind of experience what people have been uh, experiencing here uh, in Ohio. And the, actually, the exhibition has actually been to a couple of different locations already, but I would like to try to get it to travel to some other locations. Yeah. Well, we uh, here in New York, uh, we always had the Fine Arts Festival in uh, January, I believe. And it's a big uh, exhibition. I mean, you have all sorts of painters and people who come there. I think I shared with you off mic the story of my first time right. there. And I didn't know, you know, how expensive these uh exhibits could be I, I i know when i walked in i saw people who had more than five cents in their pocket but i saw one that struck me uh, i was with an ex-girlfriend of mine and i just wanted to buy this particular portrait that was hanging on the wall and uh it said 17.5 and i just saw 17 dollars 50 cents let me just get my wallet out and pay for it <laughs> and needless to say, I was so embarrassed. I didn't realize it went seventeen thousand. I guess uh, it's in some instances it's seventeen million. But you know, as I said, I didn't really stay in class for artwork, unfortunately. And my exposure was with my young cousin uh, back in the day. And um, and but it's it's time consuming work. I mean, it. Uh, you know, if I had to put together something like what you're doing. Uh, I guess it's worth every penny, and and that's something that I, I don't know. I mean, I I, I hate to. Be, I hope I'm not embarrassing because we only have a couple of minutes left here. But how does that? Uh, how do you go about, you know, um, contracting work like that? Is it just uh, a situation where people have to review what you've done, or or is it assigned? Uh, sometimes in some situations you might get a commission to do an actual piece. Um, sometimes you have to submit some proposals, but in particular, in that particular case for this, for this exhibition, I was just sort of inspired to actually create these works. You know, it was something that was on my mind and something that I really felt like I needed to, uh, sort of, um, create some, uh, some dialogue about. And so. Uh, I just, you know, felt that I needed to uh, just get this off of my chest, you know, mm. and just kind of create these pieces and just put it out there. And I, and, and I, I guess what I'm hoping to happen with this exhibition is that when people come in and experience seeing all these different portraits, they'll start to realize that, you know, wow, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's over like 27 portraits that's in this exhibition. So by just seeing the, the sheer numbers of the different individuals, they'll start to really think about the seriousness of this uh, this this uh, situation of extreme violence toward you know black men and women, and you know, and then looking at the portraits, start to uh, realize you know that you know I, I try to pick out portraits that sort of show their personalities, mm -hmm. you know, and so you know looking at the portraits people will start to understand that, you know, this was somebody's son, this was somebody's daughter, this was somebody's husband or wife, you know, that these were actual people, you know. Right. A lot of times we see the images on the news and, you know, we kind of just just take it as, as the news of that moment, you know. Mm -hmm. And we kind of just see it and it kind of, it's there for a moment and then it's gone. But I wanted these images to kind of stick in, uh, person's minds, you know. So. Right. Well, it, it's interesting you should say that because, uh, and and we only have a couple of seconds and minutes left here, but I just wanted to get this point because I know you started off with Emmett Till and uh, I was a little child when uh, that murder occurred and my mother, my parents were just basically in the States maybe no more than 10 years before. And of course, they knew uh, about racial problems in this country. But uh, my mom always kept a copy of that Ebony magazine 
which I guess is is in some sort of historical uh, place now. With pictures of the open casket and his mutilated uh, body. That prompted me to get into the news business. You know, I wow. was. I mean, I I I just couldn't imagine that something so horrific at that age. I must have been no more than nine or ten uh, back then, and. Um, and just seeing, you know, the kind of controversy that followed that, the advent of the civil rights, the height of the civil rights uh, movement that was going on. And, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, the work that you've done will be the template for somebody to look at and maybe form an opinion. And, and who knows what happens after that once it's, uh, it's exhibited and all that. Yes, right. yes. Well, Larry Winston Collins, I, I, again, it's an honor and a pleasure to have you on. I, certainly not enough time. We have to have you back. And um, thanks again for sharing this Saturday with us. And if anyone wants to make contact with you, uh, uh, what should they do? Uh, I, uh, no, go ahead. I have a, I have a website. Uh, it's LarryWCollins.com. You could take a look at my website. And uh there's a, a email address on there. It's uh, lwcollins79 at gmail.com. Uh, Very good. Again, thanks again. We'll have you back. And this has been the Urban Algorithm for this Saturday, October 2nd, 2021. Thank you for viewing, and uh, we'll be back with you soon next week for another segment. All the best. <laughs>